Today we're going to be talking about one of the new features with GL Studio 4.1. <clears throat> GL Studio 4.1 officially launched um, at the beginning of this year <clears throat> and has uh, brought a bunch of different uh, new features and plugins to the GL Studio editor. Today we're going to be talking about one of them. <clears throat> In this case we're going to be talking about the GLS Clipping Group. <clears throat> the Clipping Group will allow us to create a what you see is what you get clipped viewport region. Uh, a lot of us are very familiar with the clip viewport already. Um, anyone who's gone through the GL Studio tutorials knows about the MFD tutorial where we actually use a defined base class called Clip Viewport Base in order to create our, view, our clipping region. Today we're going to be talking about how we can actually create this within the editor using GL Studio 4.1. And then I'm going to go ahead and show how to convert current projects that are using the clipping group or the Clip Viewport Base with the GLS clipping group. So first, a quick introduction to the clipping group. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, simply create a small region in my small pro in my uh, sample project here that shows the clipping group or how the clipping group works. Uh, well, first, we're going to, go, going to go ahead and define a region. Um, this will be my clip region. <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and use the polygon tool to define it. And what I'll do here is select this polygon, and I'm going to add it to a or go ahead and group it inside a clipping group. Now that I've added this into the clipping group, um, not much has really happened. <clears throat> If I click clipping, clipping Active, we notice nothing has actually occurred yet. Uh, that's because we actually have to define a region for our clipping group. The clipping group's region will start from the center point of the clipping group, which, of course, the center point is going to be the central location of all the objects within it, uh, which is why we only start with a single polygon. That way we can have uh, better control over where the exact center of this object is located and will also help us in sizing the, op the uh, clipping group appropriately to fit the entire region. So starting from the center point, we need to define two sets of coordinates, a bottom left corner and a top right corner. <clears throat> the reason I created a polygon first is because this will actually help us in defining what those are. If I click on my polygon and inside object properties, I go down and take a look at the vertices. I've got <clears throat> first the location, 275, 275, is going to be the same location as it is for the clipping group. And this is because, like I said, since we have one object, the clipping group will take on the center point of that one object. And then in my vertices, I have a min and max point defined. Uh, relative to the center of this point, the min location of the rectangle is at negative 190, negative 145, and the max is at positive 190, positive 145. If I define those as my min and max coordinates for my clipping group, negative 190, negative 145, we start to see a square, a rectangular object, get created. Um, I made my, my uh, background a little bit darker so we can actually see the yellow. This is the actual region in which the clipping is going to take place. So I'll go ahead and fill in for the top right, which was also 190, 145. <clears throat> and now our polygon has been completely encompassed by this yellow bounding box. Like I said, this is going to be our clipping area. So I can go ahead and now remove this polygon. We have an empty group. I'll go ahead and uh, draw a sphere in here just so we can see exactly how the clipping group works. Draw a sphere that's clearly larger than the group itself. <clears throat> so we see here we have our clipping group viewport, and then we have our GLS sphere. If I take my clipping group and I actually activate clipping, we can see the effect in real time. <clears throat> So we see the sphere is now completely encased within the clipping group, and only the region that is visible within the boundaries of that clipping group can actually be seen on the object. So this is how the clipping group works. Let's go ahead and take a look really quick at a way we can uh, convert some of our existing objects that currently use Clip Viewport Base to use our new GLS clipping group. Let me close out of this project, and we're going to go to our MFD tutorial from the GL, or from the uh, GL Studio 4.0 and 4.1 tutorials. <clears throat> so we see our MFD. Uh, those of us who've been through the tutorial are already very, very familiar with how this is supposed to look. <clears throat> the one major annoyance with this thing, when we move from Section 4 of the tutorial, which is the MFD tutorial, and we go into Section 5, which is the 3D cockpit, when you place an RSO created, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when you place this design file, the MFD design file, into the 3D cockpit, the clipping, since the clipping only takes place at runtime, is not being done. So we end up having a large blue and orange region 
which is taking up the bounds of our MFD. It makes it very, very hard to place the object within the 3D cockpit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're actually going to, going to go ahead and use the clipping group to go ahead and remove all the clipped regions around this object. First, we'll start with the MFD sky. <clears throat> As we remember, we have our actual sky roll group. This is actually irrelevant at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and make it invisible. Let me darken the background so we can see our clipping region when we get to it. <clears throat> and we also have our polygon right here for clipping. Uh, once again, this is kind of a dark color, so let me go ahead and lighten this up a little bit for us so we can see it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to add our clipping region to this polygon. Just like we did before, the strategy for converting a clipped, a clipped viewport area to a GLS clipping group area, we'll go ahead and take the clip this polygon and add it to a GLS clipping group. Make a note of the rectangular region's <coughs> min and max points. In this case, the x goes from negative 440 to positive 440, and the y goes from negative 340 to positive 340. And we'll apply this to the min and max <coughs> points, the bottom left corner and the top right corner of the clipping group itself. So once again, negative 440, negative 340. Apply that for the bottom left corner. And then the same thing for the top right. It's just going to be positive 440 and positive 340. So now that we've done this and our entire region, our entire uh, GL polygon, our clip this polygon is inside the clipping group, we can remove that clipping group from our group. <coughs> and at this point, just to make it easier to keep track of the name, I'm going to go ahead and rename the clipping group to Clip This. Because this is now our clipping region. The last, thing, or the last two things we'll have to do, <clears throat> the GLS clipping group will only clip things that are inside the group. So, in the case of our sky roll group, which I'm now making visible, if I enable clipping on the GLS clipping group, we'll notice that nothing is happening. The reason for this is that the sky roll group is not actually part of the group that's going to be clipped. So we need to go ahead and take the sky roll group. I'm going to go to Edit, Cut. <clears throat> we'll click inside the little section that says Empty inside the clipping group so that we know that our pasted polygon is going to go in here. We're going to go Edit, Paste Special, Keep Name and Position. And what this will do <clears throat> is this will put the, pretty much just paste the object right back in exactly where it was. It'll keep the names accurate so that we don't mess up any of our properties. And probably most importantly, it'll maintain the same position so that when we actually do enable clipping on our clipping group, we now have the proper region being clipped. The last thing we're going to have to do, because we were originally using a modified base class, we're going to want to go ahead and remove that bit of code <clears throat> that we threw in there to actually use the clip viewport base base class. First in the generation tab. Uncheck user defined base class and remove the reference to the base class name. Moving to the code tab, we have two sections we have to modify here. We have the header file, mfdsky.h. We'll remove our entire top line here. And then if we go to the initialize class method, we have two methods that we called in here, set viewport and activate. Both of these were specific to clip viewport base, and the GLS clipping group does not need them. So we'll go ahead and remove them as well. We click save. And if we go back to the MFD, we'll see already that this is looking much, much nicer. We see that the region defined inside our object is now being clipped properly. And bringing this design into, say, the 3D cockpit is going to be a lot easier to do. <clears throat> we have four other components that, are, that use the uh, clip viewport. I'm going to go ahead and do the pitch ladder one more time, just as a review, just to, um, for, just to uh, further reinforce the concepts we're using here. The airspeed, the altitude, and the EHSI <clears throat> have already been done. So we'll, be, we'll see the uh, results afterwards, after I go ahead and save out the rest of our design files. So going to the pitch ladder, just as a review one more time, we're going to hide the ladder because we don't need to see it yet. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and show clip this so we can see our polygon. 
we select that polygon. We go ahead and click the button to convert it to a GLS clipping group. We make note inside object properties of the min and max points for the X and Y. In the case of this polygon, it's negative 174.5 and negative 140 for the bottom left and 174.5, 140 for the top right. <clears throat> we put those in in the clipping group. Bottom left, negative 174.5. Bottom left, negative 140. You can also check your work <clears throat> right here inside the uh, graphical tab. If after you put in the bottom left corner, if the uh, rectangle starts to fit the bounds of the clipping group itself, or the uh, polygon itself, then you know you're on the right track. For the top left, 174.5 and positive 140. We see the clipping group now in the graphical tab starting to take shape. <clears throat> and now that we've inputted our coordinates for our top left and bottom right corner, we see that our entire clipping group is now fit within the polygon. We take the polygon and remove it. We'll go ahead and make the ladder visible again. We select the ladder. We go Edit Cut. Select the empty region inside the clipping group. Then we go Edit, Pay Special, Keep Name and Position. And then finally, to actually see our clipping take place, we, clip, we select our clipping group, and then we check the Clipping Active button. <clears throat> One more thing, just to keep everything looking proper. We can rename our clipping group now, because the clipping group is now, being, is now what's clipped. We just rename it to clip this. And then we remove the code from the old uh, clip viewport base from this project. So generation tab. User defined base class is unchecked. The base class name is removed. In the code tab, in the header, we remove the reference to clipviewport.h. And in the initialize method, we remove the set viewport and activate methods. Then we click Save. <coughs> Going back to the MFD, we'll see the changes already got populated. Now the <coughs> pitch ladder is now fitting exactly into the bounds that it's supposed to be through clip viewport. Like I said, I've already done the airspeed, altitude, and EHSI. So quick save all, and we get the finished product. <coughs> So as we can see, we now have a what you see is what you get ability to actually see where our clipped regions are from within the editor. Not only does this make this not only does it make it easier to see what the final project will look like, but in the case of our MFD here, which had a giant <coughs> sky and uh, ground plane, we also can make this easier to insert into other projects. We no longer have to worry about the unclipped region being visible and how that might obstruct the view of the other objects around which we're trying to place the MFD. So this was our really quick first uh, GL Studio Tech Tip webinar of the new year. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us right back here at DISTI at support at DISTI.com. Once again, thank you for your time.